Hey, good afternoon and welcome to the Transport Operations and Commercial Driving uh, webinar as part of Logistics and Supply Chain Skills Week 2023. Aidan Flynn is my name. I'm the Chief Executive of the Freight Transport Association Ireland and the Chair of the Consortium Steering Group for this apprenticeship programme. So the purpose of this webinar is to provide essential information to you on this, the 65th Earn As You Learn Transport Operations and Commercial Driving Apprenticeship. Looking at the agenda, we are delighted to be joined by Tomasa Flaherty, who is at, looking after the program in ATU Sligo, and who will provide an overview of the apprenticeship and what employers and apprentices should expect from the program. We have a recorded message of support from Minister of State at the Department of Transport, Jack Chambers, TD, I will be covering the on-road driver training element of the programme. And following Tomas, we are delighted to welcome Kim Mulcahy, Assistant Manager Apprenticeship from the National Apprenticeship Office, who will provide us with information on the role of the National Apprenticeship Office and important information around that role and the role they play in the provision of services to support both apprentices and employers. We will have a couple of employer testimonials for this apprenticeship from Polar Ice and DPD, and Megan Yates, the Apprenticeship Coordinator, will close the presentations with details of what employers need to do to engage on the programme and become registered to train apprentices. Like all apprenticeships, they must be industry-led. FTA Ireland are the lead proposer and ATU Sligo are the coordinating provider. We have worked over the past number of years with a dynamic consortium, including representative bodies such as the CILT, Insurance Ireland, stakeholders such as the Health and Safety Authority and employers such as BWG, Oxygen, DPD, Musgraves, Bordnemona, ATC Transport, Polar Ice and of course AT Sligo on the development and delivery of this level six higher certificate in transport operations and commercial driving apprenticeship. It was validated and approved for delivery in mid 2022 with the first apprentices starting in October 2022. Like all Earn As You Learn modern apprenticeships, there is on-the-job learning as well as academic learning. This is the first qualification on the National Framework qualifications linked with the profession of heavy goods vehicle driving. Apprentices currently attend college online every Tuesday and work full-time due to four days per week. In this, in this program, which is fully funded, although there is a small college registration fee, which I'll go into in a minute, the apprentices will graduate in two years with a higher certificate level six award, their C rigid and CE Arctic driving license, as well as the driver CPC qualification. The college registration fee is approximately 600 euro per apprentice per year and can be paid by the employer. Benefits to the employer is that you will qualify for an annual grant of 2000 euro per, per apprentice uh, registered. The skill shortage has long been the number one issue for FTA Ireland members at all levels of their organisations. As mentioned, we are the lead proposer for this apprenticeship, but also for the Logistics Associate Apprenticeship. And we have seen the LAA programme go from strength to strength and hope that the Driving Apprenticeship programme will follow suit. Whilst the average size fleet in the haulage sector is five and a half trucks, there are over 20,000 heavy goods vehicles in the on account sector, including retail distribution, waste management, agri-food, construction. Coupled with the 20,000 or so vehicles in the haulage sector, there are many different driving roles available and organisations that this apprenticeship will suit. We'll hear later from Megan on how she is highlighting driving as a profession in schools, to parents and to career guidance at promoting the profession. And these apprenticeships are affording us access to young people that we never had access to before. And it's now up to employers to support these initiatives as best as they can. The need for, for this apprenticeship is multifaceted. With full employment, all sections of our economy are struggling to recruit the right people into the right jobs. The role of the professional heavy goods vehicle driver is under pressure due to an aging working population. The average age of drivers is over 50. And the perception that is not a well-paid and very labour intensive job. This is not the case. Professional driving is highly regulated and there are many different commercial driving roles available for consideration. Industry and companies within the industry must, do more, must be more proactive 
in participating in the solutions of the skills shortage. We are competing against many other sectors for limited resources, and it is incumbent on employers to develop long-term strategies to support succession planning within their organizations, begin to focus on attracting younger people into their business, and getting better at promoting their organizations to discerning young people, prioritizing terms and conditions of employment and career progression opportunities. Certainly this apprenticeship will help with that. This um, is the first ever logistics and supply chain skills week, and it takes place from today, the 27th of March to the 1st of April inclusive. And the objectives of Logistics Week is to promote the logistics and supply chain sector to students, new entrants and potential career changers. The Logistics and Supply Chain Skills Group was established in 2019 to support the promotion of careers, skill development and sustainable employment in the logistics and supply chain sectors in Ireland. The group includes key stakeholder representatives from government, academia and industry and is currently chaired by the Department of Transport on the basis of the department's links to the wider transport industry. We are delighted to participate and support this initiative that we hope will become an annual event. Our thanks and consideration to the Department of Transport and to Lorcan Sheehan and James Kearney, co-chairs of the subgroup organization committee. We now have um, a short message from Minister of State at the Department of Transport Responsibility for Logistics and International Trade. Jack Chambers, which I will play for you. Good morning. As Minister with special responsibility for international and road transport and logistics, I'm delighted to send you this video message in support of the Transport Operations and Commercial Driver Apprenticeship. Earlier today, I launched the first ever Logistics and Supply Chain Skills Week in Ireland. This is an exciting and important week for a sector that is at the very heart of our economy. The objective of the week is to promote the sector to students, new entrants and career changers, as well as to highlight the needs that are needed in the industry now and into the future. I want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the work of Aidan Flynn and the entire team for their work on this really important programme. The Transport Operations and Commercial Driving Apprenticeship Programme CDAP is a standout example of industry and academic collaboration to respond to the driver shortage, which as we all know is a global problem. While recruitment of drivers from abroad can play a role in the short term, it is not without its challenges, and we need a long-term sustainable solution to attract and retain HGV drivers here in Ireland. The CDAP is the first qualification on the national framework of qualifications linked to the profession of commercial driving and is key because it promotes a culture of professional development for drivers, which has benefits for workers and businesses alike. Crucially, the programme also provides school leavers and new entrants with a more holistic understanding of the transport and logistics sector and the type of jobs available at all levels of the supply chain. This industry-led apprenticeship will increase the opportunities for sustainable career paths within the industry and aims to provide apprentices with the technical, conceptual and interpersonal competencies to successfully work in this really dynamic field. I had the pleasure of meeting one of the current apprentices, Sarah Grace and Ross Lair, last month, and it is really great to see so many young people, and women especially, interested in commercial driving. Sarah's passion for her apprenticeship really shone through, and I know that she will have a long and rewarding career ahead of her. However, as we all know, women are still vastly underrepresented in this sector, with just 2% of HGV driving licenses currently held by women. While there is undoubtedly more work to do to address this, it is particularly encouraging to see greater gender diversity among the students already enrolled on the programme. And I really hope that the transport operations and commercial driving apprenticeship will serve as a springboard for greater diversity amongst drivers and in the logistics and supply chain sector more widely. 
as well as this webinar and other online events, it is fantastic to see the range of in-person Logistic Week events in Rosslair, Dublin, Carlo, Athlone uh, and Limerick. This is a great opportunity to bring together for the first time the current and future generations of supply chain leaders, trade organisations and academic leaders in collaboration with government departments representing transport, enterprise, trade, social protection, education and further education and skills. And I would strongly encourage you as employers to sign up uh, to be involved with the CDAP programme. I would like to conclude by once again uh, thanking you for inviting me to speak about, about this really important event, showcasing how the CDAP provides the qualification and practical training and work experience to support a vibrant and exciting career in this vitally important sector to our economy. I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the webinar uh, and thanks very much for inviting me to say a few words. Good morning. Good morning. As mentioned earlier, the purpose of the Transport Operations and Commercial Driving Apprenticeship Programme is to address the staffing and skill shortage of vehicle operators, commercial drivers in the transport industry by having an apprenticeship route into this occupation. The objective of the programme is to acknowledge and recognise the changing role of the occupation of the commercial driver and to ensure that they will have acquired the necessary knowledge, skills and competence to carry out the core tasks and responsibilities of their role. And this programme also aims to attract more women to the profession of commercial driving. As the Minister mentioned, currently only 2% of HGV licences are issued to women at the moment. Our first class started last October and 20% of the first class are women, so we're certainly on the right track. Looking at the programme entry requirements, there are a minimum entry requirement from an academic perspective. Leaving Cert is required with a minimum of H706 or above in five learning, leaving certificates or equivalent subjects. Recognition of prior learning applies to over 23s. In addition, applicants must have a full clean B licence and be at least 18 years of age in year one of the programme. So 18 is the minimum age requirement to attain a full C and or CE driving licence. Applicants who have full driving licences in the commercial categories will also be welcome on this programme and will not have to attend the on-road driver training and students will be exempt from the module associated with the on-road training, uh, but will be required to complete the principles of professional driving module. This slide is designed to provide you with an idea of the timeline for the on-road driver training and driving tests from the commencement of the programme. We are encouraging potential employers to recruit their apprentices at least a couple of months before the start of the programme. Apprentices will need to apply for the Learner C licence and complete multiple choice uh, theory tests and get a medical um, to attain the, the Learner Permit. The academic year will start in September 2023 and preparation will start to complete the driver CPC case studies with on-road driver training starting in January 2024. Test for the C license in March and lessons for the CE Arctic uh, truck to start in July or so. Apprentices will be supported in attaining valuable work experience supported by mentors and a structured plan within the employer organization that will deliver safer experienced drivers upon graduation of this program. Remember, the academic year is only 26 weeks and for the other 26 weeks each year, the apprentices are working full time, i.e. five days a week. So that's it from me for the moment. And Megan will provide more details of how to get in touch later on. Uh, but for uh, more information and to da download brochures for both the employer and apprentices, please visit www.cdap.ie. Um, and our email address is info at cdap.ie. Um, and there's details of the Generation Apprenticeship uh, website there now. I would like to hand over to Tomas of Flaherty. Um, who is the head of marketing at ATU at Sligo and is looking after the delivery of this transport operations and commercial driving apprenticeship. Great. Thank you, Aidan. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tomoso Flaherty, head of the Department of Marketing, Tourism and Sport, uh, where this fantastic program sits and we look after your academic studies. So as Aidan has already outlined, the aim of this program is to ensure that graduates have an appreciation of the wider business context of transport operations 
in organizational performance, competitiveness, structures within the company. Um, the program aims to provide a comprehensive education in business, as well as the technical skills and competencies that might be required for commercial driving. And as you'll see later on, learners will undertake a wide range of general business related subjects that are aligned to a transport operations specialism. And what we'll also see is that during both years of the programs, the learners will study theoretical principles in an applied manner and alongside more technical modules that will be of interest to them. So in general terms, from an academic perspective, we will have two academic years on the program. They typically run from September to May each year. And each academic year in itself is split into two semesters. The first semester uh, will be 13 weeks and runs from September or mid-September to mid-December. And then the second semester runs from mid-January to the first week of May. As part of your studies, you will be completing one day of online lectures and four days where you'll be at work. The lectures are online so that you don't have to travel for the lectures. You can attend them at work. Um, or you can attend them in a, a location convenient to yourself. Um, but there's no need on a general basis to be traveling to listen to these lectures. The lectures are also recorded. Uh, so if you want to go back over something when you're studying, then they'll be there for you again to review. We do at the start of the program provide an on-campus induction day where we take students and mentors through the program and what's going to be ahead of them for the, the following two years. We introduce them to our systems and how to operate within our learning environment. And we have this virtual learning environment that we'll show you how to use. Um, we also have for some modules on campus workshops for the more practical workshops where you'll be actually looking at uh, maybe a HGV and looking at the different systems or operation principles or main components of uh, those type of vehicles. And you'll be attending site to work with your lecturer in that uh, specific module. We would also uh, tend to arrange maybe two days per semester where you come on site instead of having online lectures, you can come on site and meet your class, uh, have discussions, meet your lectures, and have a, a bit more of an interactive lecture day than just um, the usual online lectures. So we find that works well for everyone. Uh, next slide, Aidan, please. So just to give those of you that might not be familiar with maybe a breakdown of the academic year, Normally, lectures will commence for the first semester of each of the academic years in mid-September. Just before that, we'll have an induction day, which will set you up for, for your studies moving forward. And then lectures for that first semester will last for 13 weeks. Uh, you will get a midterm break to allow you to catch up on project work. Um, and then we'll finish sometime around mid-December. Uh, the second semester, once you've finished your project work, etc., for the uh, first semester will start in mid-January and that will run on to the first week of May. Again, there will be uh, some breaks for Easter um, and allow you time to catch up on your project work and your, your own work uh, in your professional capacity. Uh, so it does look like a long time, but each semester is only 13 weeks long and it does pass quite quickly. Next slide. So what I'd like to do is basically give you a short overview of some of the modules that you might be uh, covering uh, if, you, if you decide to enroll on the program. Uh, it's important to understand that it, the, this is an overview and I won't go into too much detail uh, so that uh, it doesn't become too overwhelming. But what we do have is a breakdown between practical type modules and more theoretical business type modules. So for example, the first module in the table there, which is the introduction to heavy goods vehicles, technology and commercial vehicle roadworthiness testing is really a practical module and it introduces the apprentice to the basic construction function and operation principles of the main components in the HGV and CVRT. And obviously the driver apprentice will gain a practical knowledge of modern heavy good vehicles. And it's a practical workshop type module where you're actually dealing with the vehicles and not sitting in a classroom. So you will actually be on campus for that. Um, another interesting module is the professional driving module or the principles of professional driving, where you get an overview of the principles of professional driving and be introduced to the types of commercial vehicles, 
weight and dimension limits in Ireland, for example, are types of trailers. So it does uh, cover a multitude of different aspects that is delivered through lectures and obviously informs the, the HGV module. Other modules that you'll do in your first semester are designed to introduce you to the academic environment. And so, for example, there you see a module called Personal Effectiveness and ICT, and it's designed to introduce the apprentice to the higher education environment and to help them develop learning and study skills. And this module will also provide the apprentice with the skills to use a variety of computer applications that they might find useful in their studies or at work. Um, and finally there, the introduction to supply chain will introduce our apprentices to the fundamentals of supply chains and key terminology associated with them. Uh, thank you, Aidan. Um, the purpose of the driver test and CPT, CPC training, excuse me, is to set and maintain high standards of road safety, health um, and driving among uh, professional drivers and really our students are currently uh, doing their rigid body driving lessons at the moment, as Aidan has mentioned, and they will soon sit their tests. So again, this is a, a practical type module. Just below that, we see warehousing and distribution. You can see that's uh, building on the information and lectures that were covered in the first semester, and it will examine the importance of distribution and warehousing management and decision making. And it will provide an understanding to the apprentice of the key supply chain areas of distribution and warehousing. If we look at customer care, that's going to allow the students to develop effective customer care skills and empower them to create positive customer experiences, build customer loyalty and uh, cultivate a customer centric attitude uh, for the benefit of the customers and, of course, uh, your organizations. And uh, introduction to finance will enable students to recognize basic accounting terminology discuss stock control and cost behavior, all of the things many of us don't like. But of course, uh, it is very practical and uh, allows uh, our apprentices to develop an insight into what does uh, inform financial decisions in a company. For example, a, a project that was looked at this semester is how they might go about costing a new fleet of delivery trucks. Uh, so it does become very int interesting and practical from the apprentice's perspective. And finally, and you'll notice two modules like this in stage one and stage two, we have the reflective e-portfolio. This module doesn't actually have lecture time associated with other than support, but it's really designed to try and link academic learning with the workplace learning and experience that our apprentices are gaining. And the module relates to key aspects of the transport operations that we discussed previously that are covered in year one of the program. And we're trying to link them to what their, the apprentices are actually working on uh, during their, their uh, normal everyday professional lives. Uh, and the apprentice has to work closely with their mentors or the company mentors for this module so that they're, they're getting, uh, I suppose, greater insight into the, the professional side of the organization. In terms of uh, semester one of stage two, again, you'll start to see that we do practical modules and uh, maybe more academic modules. Road freight operations and route planning will provide an introduction and ensure the apprentice has an understanding of road freight logistics. And we can see we're building on this logistics the whole time. It will provide a basic understanding of the types of commercial vehicles um, and uh, maybe international and national distribution. And th those aspects or definitions maybe of, and concepts of road freight logistics. The health and safety module, again, uh, very uh, from a very practical perspective, perspective is designed to provide apprentices with a comprehensive introduction to the health and safety requirements for working as a professional driver. And this is directly related again then to legal studies for the transport industry, which will also give the apprentice an introduction to the Irish and European legal systems and to develop their awareness of the legal issues relevant to them in the transport industry. And Again, this is introductory. It's basic principles of law or sources of Irish and EU law that are relevant uh, to their, let's say, professional capacity. Customs and international trade uh, will provide the apprentice with knowledge and understanding uh, of the competencies required in an international trade and customs environment. And will obviously review the role of function of customs in the context of international trade, maybe globalization. Again, it's introductory, but it does highlight that a driver has key responsibilities when transiting uh, borders and 
this module will detail uh, many of these requirements so that uh, our apprentices are aware of this. And uh, finally, uh, the last semester, we deal with interesting topics like sustainable transport operations and technologies, which will introduce the learner to new and emerging technologies in the area of driving technologies, such as telematics, GPS sensors, autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles, and maybe driver assisted systems. In terms of enterprise and market development, uh, the module will introduce the learner to the contribution and value of entrepreneurship and innovation to the economy and to the organization and try and develop that entrepreneurial spirit in the workplace. Um, the final module there, the final academic module is the introduction to management or let's say supervision and organizational behavior. And this will really outline uh, some of the supervisory or management skills for the contemporary workplace and help students build their supervisory skills through real life uh, concepts or examples and in practice and try and relate that to their own work placement. Um, the final module there is a, again the reflective e-portfolio and I'm going to discuss this in a slight bit more detail in the next slide but it's similar to the one in module uh, in year one and it provides an opportunity for reflection and work-based learning on what they've covered in year two. So it's important to understand for the reflective e-portfolio the uh, I suppose the impact that a mentor would have on this module. There are no lectures necessarily associated with it. We look uh, to the apprentice to try and link what they're learning in the college environment to what they're doing at work or what they may be doing at work. And it's really forming that link and emphasizing that what we do in the classroom is relevant to what they may be doing on a daily basis. And it does focus on the, the key aspects of transport op operations that I've gone through on the previous slides. We set specific tasks or case studies and reflective diaries uh, for the apprentices to complete during the semester. And then they work on these with their mentor uh, and they have a number of attempts obviously to get this uh, correct. And what's important for us to emphasize here is that we do focus on more continuous assessment than final exams. So that's something that uh, helps build uh, every apprentice's conf confidence as they progress through the program. Um, next slide, please. I just want to briefly touch on the roles and responsibilities of the apprentice and the mentor and the manager. Obviously, the mentor and the manager could be the same person, but really uh, our mentor and apprentice will have quite a, a close relationship in terms of they will be working together. The mentor will be providing guidance. It's obviously up to the apprentice to do the study and then the mentor to provide some guidance on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis. Next slide, please. Um, so for the apprentice, obviously we'd like to see them fulfilling the obligations of their own role within their own organizations. They'll be working four days a week and then they'll be with us for one day a week attending online lectures uh, where they will be interacting with lecturers and, uh, and themselves in class, obviously in the environment we're all, we're all quite good at learning online now. Um, and th that is quite an interactive environment but there will be tasks associated with each module that they'll have to complete, and these will be relevant to the workplace. And we will be looking for the students to try and bring that learning back into the workplace and inform their actual assessments. For the mentor, and a mentor is uh, a very critical role uh, from our own perspective and obviously from the apprentice's perspective. Uh, they're obviously looking to ensure that the apprentice is working uh, on site, but also attending online lectures and online sessions. And maybe it, it, the role may be divided up between a number of people within the organization, but maybe not. But what is important is that we can, that we can ensure that mentors are there to support the, the apprentices as they move through their studies, that they're there to ask questions and interact with them in certain modules so that they can provide guidance um, and maybe point them in the right direction of what they should be looking uh, for to complete an assignment within the particular organization because every organization is different and we can uh, understand that when we set assessments it may not be specifically um, clear to an apprentice where it is within their own organization but this is where the mentor's role uh, comes into play and is of vital importance and then finally um, I just wanted to highlight and it's just a single slide here that there's a lot of I suppose uh, effort there's a lot of information there for you to digest but 
what we do want to make you aware of is that we don't just uh, ask our apprentices to sign up and start um, working on their uh, level six qualification immediately. We do provide an induction for both the students and the mentors in terms of what's expected over the academic year. We show them our systems and, and how we're going to interact and how we can get access to lectures and learning material, as well as maybe study techniques and, and different aspects like that. So that's before uh, any of the, the, the study starts in say mid-September of next year. On-campus days for students are arranged uh, generally for our online programs in ATU Sligo, but particularly for the apprentices that are working around the country on this program, we would like to see them coming to campus maybe two days per semester so that they can interact with each other and their lecturers and give them a more rounded experience or learning experience. We also do the same with the mentors. We invite them uh, to the induction day and they see what the apprentices will be uh, pursuing it during their studies. And we also have separate mentoring sessions or mentoring training uh, for our mentors because we realize it's a, it's a commitment from them and they're obviously providing this uh, vital mentorship uh, to the apprentices that we, we value and obviously we want to help them as much as we can. In terms of more academic supports, we obviously have an online library, we have academic supports like the Writing Centre, we have learning supports for people maybe with dyslexia or something like that. So please, anyone that feels maybe uh, that study is not for them, then they should definitely contact us and discuss this. And there are many supports uh, in the organisation to help. Um, also then, let's not forget the lecturers and the programme uh, director. They're all very keen on this program. They love this program and they love interacting with, the, with their students, which we've found over the last six months. And it's been really interesting um, and eventful uh, interaction with our students uh, during the course of the different modules. Um, so in summary, there are a wide variety of supports and we'll provide obviously a more comprehensive overview of those if you do decide to enroll on the program or if one of your colleagues decides to enroll on the program and hopefully uh, that you will find this of interest. And if you have any queries, then don't hesitate to contact myself. Thank you. That's great, Tomas. And I have to say, um, I would fully endorse um, the efforts you and your colleagues are putting in, not only to look after the apprentices, but indeed the, the uh, mentors. And I think it's an added benefit for employers, actually, in terms of the support that's available for, for the mentors as well, who ultimately bring back their experience to the benefit of the employers as they journey through these programs as well so um it is great to see so i would like now to pass the baton on to uh, kim mulpahi um, and i'm delighted kim has time uh, to be with us today um on behalf of the national apprenticeship office uh, because i think um the journey apprenticeships in general have been on over the last number of years is a huge success story and, and we're obviously delighted to be part of the generation apprenticeship family um, but I will uh, get Kim now to give you an insight into what the National Apprenticeship Office is um, and tell us a little bit more about generation apprenticeship. Thanks Kim. Thanks very much, Aidan, and thanks for having me here today. So as you mentioned, my name is Kim Mulcahy, and I recently took up the position of manager in the National Apprenticeship Office. So the National Apprenticeship Office was established last year in 2022 by Solis and the Higher Education Authority. And the office was established to coordinate and, and drive the apprenticeship, apprenticeship expansion within Ireland. So currently a big focus of the National Apprenticeship Office is implementing the National Apprenticeship Action Plan 21 to 25. And the office has responsibility for managing, overseeing and developing the apprenticeship system in Ireland. And it's acting as a single point of contact for anyone that wants to engage with apprenticeship. You'll see on the slide that one of the one of the actions that we undertook last year was to establish a free phone number for anyone that wants to engage with apprenticeships, um, apprentices, employers, um, providers, anybody at all that wants to get any information. There's a free phone number there now that people can ring and actually speak to someone and get and get guidance on on what they're looking for. Um, you can go to the next slide, Aidan, if that's OK, please. 
Now, I, last year, at the end of last year, the National Apprenticeship Office um, completed a report on the work that was done for 2022, and that report is available on apprenticeship.ie. But this is just a snapshot of where we were in terms of apprenticeship registration and employers registrations at the end of December 2022. So there's currently 66 apprenticeship programmes available in Ireland, ranging from level five to level 10 on the National Framework of Qualifications. At the end of December last year, we had um, nearly 9,000 employers registered. Um, there was a population of over 26,000 apprentices. Um, very interesting that we have Sarah speaking today about this apprenticeship and that we have Megan on the call because one of our big targets now is um, women in apprenticeships. You'll see that the figure as of December 22 was 1,950, but we really want to, to build on this figure and drive that this year. And then the total registrations of apprentices last year was just over 8,000. So the ambition is by 2025 to make this 10,000 annual registrations of apprentices and 12,000 annual registrations of employers. Um, the next slide, please, Aidan. I just wanted to give you a snapshot. So the consortia-led programmes commenced in 2016 um, following the review of apprenticeships in Ireland in 2013. So you'll see here from this graphic that the consortia-led model is really starting to expand over the last number of years. And with the likes of these apprenticeships and all the new ones that are coming on board, it's really important in driving that apprenticeship numbers up and helping us reach the targets that are set out within, within the action plan. Uh, you can go to the next slide, thanks. And um, so this just gives a snapshot of um, women in apprenticeships as well. And as you can see, the consortium model has really um, led to more females joining um, apprenticeship programs, which is which is really great. Again, we're we're nowhere near where we want to be in in targeting women into apprenticeship, but we're we're building on it. Um, we have recently launched a new initiative. Um, Minister Simon Harris launched it on International Women's Day. It's faces, facts, and figures. Um, so that's um, a campaign based on getting more females into apprenticeship. And um, we have, and it's really targeting getting into girls' schools as well to speak about apprenticeships and showing them the offers that are that are there. So that was a great campaign that has just that's just undertaken. And again, all that information is available on apprenticeship.ie. Go to the next slide. So as I mentioned, there's 66 apprenticeship programs currently available. And there's 15 families. So logistics is one of the families and that's where the transport operations and commercial driver apprenticeship sits within, within the family of, of apprenticeships. So that's just to kind of give you an idea of the logistics A. So each family has an A and this is the, the logistics one and this is the programs within the logistics. And you can see that they range from level six to, to level nine, which is really, really great to, to see. Go to the next slide. This is just a very quick overview slide of the 66 apprenticeships that are available and the 15 families. And on the next slide, it just gives a, a snapshot of more apprenticeships that are due to launch this year. So we have 10 more apprenticeships in um, due to launch within 2023. So it's, it's really good to see the apprenticeship system building. Great, thank you. So um, we recently as recently as last week, actually launched an, um, an employer survey, which is one of the key actions in the action plan for apprenticeship. And this is really to build on the information that employers have on apprentice apprenticeships, what's working well, what they'd like to see. So if there is any employers on this call that, that are currently apprentice employers, we'd be very grateful if you, if you could give us your feedback. And this will really help shape the future of, of apprenticeships. And this will be an annual survey that we'll be running out for employers and we'll be launching an apprentice survey later in the year as well. Um, the next slide. Also another one of our big projects at the moment is um, One More Jobs. It's an initiative we're promoting and supporting apprentices within smaller um, micro and smaller employers. Um, so this is a phased pilot, which is going to be launched um, in April, on the 24th of April in Sligo. And this is really to help smaller employers get involved with apprenticeships um, and give them some guidance and support in order to take on apprentices. Again, this will be launched in April and more information will be available. We'll, 
we'll send it out to Aidan and and colleagues as well who can who can um, send it on further. But um, all again, all this information will be available on apprenticeship.ie. The next one, and just yet, yeah, want to give you a quick overview of just some of the um, flagship events that we have planned for this year. Um, we had last year, we had the first Apprentice of the Year Awards, which was a really special occasion, and we'll be going ahead with that again this year. Um, we had this year, we had employer awards for the last number of years. This year, it's just changed slightly and it's going to be mentors and supervisors that's a work entitled but it's just to really get to champion those people that look after apprentices within the companies guide them so that was um, another great award ceremony last year and just really good to kind of see all the hard work that's been done and get a snapshot of it we have a set we'll have a second level competition running in schools which will be launched in September just to really embed that apprenticeships within the schools and get the word out and then the apprentice 3D sculpture as well. Just another opportunity to get apprentices working together and to get the focus of apprenticeship out there and in front of everyone. So that's just kind of lots of events going on throughout the year, but that's just kind of a, a snapshot of some of the bigger ones that we that we have and that we organize through the National Apprenticeship Office. So really just a, a whistle stop tour of, of what we do and where we are. But um, as I said, there is a free phone number available. So if anyone wants any questions or anything that we can help with, and all the information is also available on apprenticeship.ie. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Kim. Um, and of course, we're delighted to be uh, listed there amongst the uh, the logistics apprenticeships. Um, and it is a very exciting time. It's very important for us as an industry to be involved. and. Um, it's great support from the office. I, I think even for employers looking to recruit, there's the ability to post jobs and everything else. Um, and Megan can touch on that and certainly help employers that are looking uh, to recruit on that. So there's plenty of resources, plenty of great information um, and I appreciate your time. So move, moving on, uh, we're looking forward and I'm really delighted now that we have a couple of employer endorsements of this particular programme. Um, we have a recorded message from Polar Ice, and then uh, we will cut to uh, Stephen Tacker from DPD. And so I'll just play this short little video. Hello, my name is Janice Ryan. I'm Operations and Transport Manager for Polar Ice Limited a dry ice manufacturing company. Polar Ice have their own fleet, which is critical. As dry ice is a just-in-time product, it is made to order. Having our own fleet gives us full control over the delivery schedule, allowing us to deliver on time, every time. My background in logistics goes back to my younger years. My father was a self-employed haulier operating Des Ryan International, and I worked alongside him for over 20 years. He was my mentor and instilled in me a love of the logistics industry. Polar Ice are members of the Freight Transport Association of Ireland. I was appointed to the Freight Transport Association of Ireland board in 2021. I'm also a member of the Logistics Associate Apprenticeship and the Transport Operations and Commercial Driving Apprenticeship. Supporting programmes like this is important because all new Aaron as you learn apprenticeship programmes must be industry led. We in Polarise support these apprenticeships in particular, as it will go a long way to addressing the skill shortage in our industry. Polarise have taken the decision to upscale one of our own team members on the Transport Operations and Commercial Driving Apprenticeship, giving that person the opportunity for professional development as well as graduating in under two years with a Level 6 qualification from Atlantic Technology University Sligo. Under this programme, apprentices are given the opportunity to gain a higher education qualification, as well as their professional driving qualification, giving them both the technical and business skills to excel in their industry. The programme is supported by lead proposer, Freight Transport Association of Ireland, and coordinating provider, Atlantic Technology University, Sligo. It is through their combined efforts and supported by a strong consortium that this programme has come to fruition. Polar Ice are thrilled to be part of the very first group of apprentices and we were all excited for the future growth that lies ahead. I also mentored the Polar Ice team member who is on the Commercial Driver Apprenticeship. He's really enjoying his journey on the course and is almost finished year one. 
Looking at the modules, the content is extremely valuable and I highly recommend this apprenticeship to other companies and persons, male or female, wishing to pursue a career in the logistics and supply chain industry. I myself have my truck license since the age of 20 and having this skill is an added bonus for me as a transport manager. I don't drive a truck for a living, however, it is very useful to have if needed. I love my job and I'm thrilled to be involved in our industry. Great. So um, thanks for that, Denise. And I would like now to hand over to uh, Stephen, who could uh, say a few words as well. Thanks very much, Stephen. Sure. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Aidan. And uh, yeah, so my name is uh, Stephen Thacker and I'm the People uh, Development Manager uh, here at DPD Ireland. Um, and I can say uh, all of us here at DPD are uh, delighted to be involved in today's webinar. Uh, which marks the start of an important week uh, within our sector. With uh, the challenges that we face in recruitment, retention, uh, the underrepresentation of women, the harbouring of talent, events uh, such as these are vital in promoting our sector uh, and securing a positive uh, future for us all. For a few years now, um, DPD has been running a number of different apprenticeship programmes um, including the Logistics Associate Apprenticeship Programme, and we've seen the enormous uh, benefits this has brought to our organisation. With the advent um, of the Transport Operations and uh, Commercial Drivers Apprenticeship Programme, we naturally jumped at the chance uh, to be involved in what we saw as an important uh, and exciting uh, opportunity for us. Uh, for this, uh, for us, this program has created uh, an additional pathway into what was a particularly challenging, challenging area of our industry, and I'm thrilled that our first participant on this program uh, is a woman. So, what are the benefits uh, of this to to DPD? Well, first, it provides uh, has provided a structured pathway um, into the driving sector for those who may not have considered this as an option before. Um, it gives our employees the opportunity to broaden and deepen their knowledge of our sector, uh, an essential aspect, an essential aspect um, in developing our management teams um, of the future. And it also supports our wider employee engagement strategy, uh, giving us highly motivated employees, um, keen to learn and grow with our company uh, and excited about their future prospects within our business. I can tell you that uh, the apprenticeships uh, have already delivered on a number of these points uh, in our other programmes, and we're seeing this already as well under the Transport and Commercial Drivers Programme. Last year, uh, in 2022, uh, DPD was awarded the Best Graduate Programme uh, at the National HR and Leadership Awards, uh, which recognised our uh, apprenticeship programme as a unique opportunity um, that it gives those uh, looking to build a career within our sector um, who may not have considered uh, it otherwise. Uh, I'd just like to share with you some of, the, some of the comments that our apprenticeships have made about our apprenticeship programmes. Um, firstly, it's been quite some time since I've been this motivated. The opportunity cannot be overstated. Um, and also, uh, it's had a massive impact on my confidence and a big impact on my motivation. I can honestly say I would not have been as motivated to excel and succeed without doing this programme. So in summary, at DPD, we're delighted to be involved in uh, such an important and exciting initiative for our sector, uh, and we're looking forward to further participants taking part in this programme at the next intake in September this year. Um, thanks a million, uh, Steve. Um, um, we'll just get back there to the presentation. Um, I really appreciate your time, actually, and to Denise, because Obviously, with, with apprenticeship programs we mentioned earlier, they have to be employer led, industry led. We, we've proven the industry need. And of course, the next step is for industry involvement and engagement. So without employers, these apprenticeships don't work. And um, so really pleasing to hear the positive feedback um, from you, Stephen. And also, I think that the validation um, is the information you're getting back from your apprentices themselves in terms of their self-worth and confidence, which is just um fantastic to hear so and uh, we really appreciate that and um, on, on the note of apprentices we we've one little video left uh, to play you now before i hand you over to uh, megan as, as we mentioned earlier uh, sarah uh, an apprentice from board namona 
um, has been part of a star of the promotional video used for Logistics Supply Chain Skills Week. So I'll, I'll play you this uh, piece. Um, and everything she says here was unprompted as well, unscripted, so which is even even better. My name is Sarah Grace and I'm doing the Transport Operations and Commercial Driving Apprenticeship through ATU in Sligo. It's a level six course, it's going to take me two years to do and I'm currently working in Bordnamona in Kildare. When I finish this course I will get my business degree um, along with my rigid license and my Arctic license. I'm really enjoying this course. I'd highly recommend it to anyone looking to get into the transport sector, especially women. Brilliant. Um, My I, name is... Congratulations to uh, Sarah. So I would like to pass you over now to Megan, who will um, take it up from here. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Aidan. So as mentioned, my name is Megan Yates. I am the Apprentice Coordinator on the Transport Operations and Commercial Driving Apprenticeship. So I am your main point of contact, whether it be employer, whether it be um, apprentices, or just anybody looking for any information or wanting to talk through the programme in more depth. So you can see the email there, as mentioned earlier, is info at cdap.ie. So I'll take you through the steps of what's involved now in the registration process. So from an employer perspective. So we already have, as Aidan earlier mentioned in it, a great number of employers already on the programme. We had a very successful year one last September on our intake for our very first year. So we're hoping to capitalise on that now this year. We have a number of those companies putting forward their second batch of apprentices, which is amazing to see and always speaks testament to how great the programme is that, as Steve said earlier, they're looking forward to putting their next batch on and we've many others who will as well. But many of you out there maybe didn't hear of the programme last year or weren't ready or didn't have maybe the business need for an apprentice, but maybe now is the right time to consider signing up for the September 2023 intake. So your first protocol there, your step one is to express an interest. So you can do that through contacting myself there through the email. You can download the employer guide on our website, which is also www.cdap.ie. And we will receive a prompt there, an email prompt, which we can contact and follow up with you there either. Or you can get in touch with me via LinkedIn or get in touch with Aidan or Tomas or Kim or anybody else here as well today who will also be happy to assist. We can then set up an informal information meeting. So the majority of the meetings nowadays we're doing are through Teams. So it's a great informal way to answer any questions or queries or maybe any concerns you have. Maybe you want to sign up, but you're not sure if it would suit your business needs or how to go about it. So happy to do that via Teams, via site visit, via phone call, just to help you get started. Step two then is our lovely generation apprenticeship step then where we get you registered as an employer. So as Kim kindly went through earlier, the generation apprentice office there are there for support as well. So we get you signed up as an employer. We advise you sign up as early as possible. Even if you're not sure yet how many apprentices you want to take on, maybe you're not even sure if you'll be ready this September or the following September, but better to get yourself registered as early as possible. So that steps out of the way. And we can register your apprentice then right up to the beginning of term. So once you do this, you will receive a visit then from your local officer, your ETB officer, who'll come out and who'll help complete the paperwork side, a site visit, and just confirm that your company and as an employer, you're suitable to take on an apprentice. And then you nominate a mentor. So as Tomas kindly pointed out earlier, there's the mentorship program as part of this. So we can give you more details, but it must be someone who's with the company for a number of years and who holds some sort of senior position. So they're used to already managing a team and being a supportive member. Once this is complete, then we move on to step three, which you can either, if it's an external hiring process you want to do, which I'll cover in a few moments, we can help you advertise that job spec through our social media channels, through Generation Apprentice, through the likes of careers portal, the number of different avenues if you want to attract external talent, or potentially as we've seen in the past and as we have interest going forward, 
some companies want to put internal employees on the program. So we saw from Denise there in Polar Ice, they wanted to upskill one of their members. So of course, that's completely fine. We can skip steps three and go st straight on to step four then, which is registering the apprentice. So we register them with Solace and with ATU Sligo, and then they're good to go on the program. So as you can see, it's a four step, really straightforward process. I'm here all through the process to give a guiding hand, as are all our other members who are specialized in each of the different steps. So you're not left to do it on your own. There's nothing that we can't resolve. We've had plenty of different unique scenarios where we've been able to work through with both employers and apprentices in the past, and we're glad to provide that support going forward. So then to have a look at in terms of our marketing and promotion. So we have a number of different social media channels. So we'd love if you could like, follow, share, retweet, visit our website, get more information, see what we've been up to, see the different events, the different promotional activities. There's going to be a lot after this week, as mentioned earlier, it's Logistics and Supply Chain Skills Week. So myself and my colleagues will be out at all the different events in person and online throughout the week, sharing information on the programs. So our Twitter handle, our Instagram handles are there. Our website details are there. And also through our website, you can also click through to any of the social media channels from the icons. And we also have a LinkedIn page as well, especially beneficial to employers, which is the Transport Operations and Commercial Driving LinkedIn page. Okay, click on. So you can see there, that's just a snapshot of how they look. So you know you found the right channel. So first one there is our website. So on our website as well, we advertise the jobs, we advertise events and news. So there's a lot of really useful information for both employers and potential apprentices. Our Twitter then, our Instagram is really good for attracting talent, especially young people, getting them engaged, showing them what's on offer. And then as I mentioned, our LinkedIn there as well. So all those channels will be able to share job specs on, news and updates, so you can keep up to date with us. And then you can see we already have our first apprenticeship uh, position for September 2023 advertised there to the Generation Apprentice website, and it is with ATC. So we can see there you can put up the job spec from an employer perspective to get out to do external recruitment. And we'll be resharing that across our social media channels. So any potential employers who are out there or employers from last year who are already registered, who have their job spec ready to go, please do get in touch and I'll get it posted and shared. And hopefully we'll attract some amazing new talent, especially the young women to the industry. Uh, if you click on there, Aiden. So just to wrap it up then, just to say thank you. So thank you to all our panelists that were here today giving their insight. Thank you to everyone who has joined us on the first day of what is to be a very exciting week of events. So we hope to see you all at some more events again soon. And any further details or any further inquiries you have, you can reach us at info at cdap.ie. So thank you very much. <laughs>